A number of years ago, when we bought our little place, um, there was a huge willow tree that died. And we had to have it cut down. And I couldn't afford to have it chopped up and hauled away. So I had this, these guys chop it up into these huge six foot chunks. And I made them into big old benches we put around our fireplace, which turned out awesome. They've been a fun addition to our backyard. Um, this is a chunk of wood from that tree and as you can see it's pretty rotten at least on the edges but the it's it's a willow weeping willow tree and cer it is certainly soft wood but it had some really cool grain in it and so i thought you know what i want to throw a caution to the wind and see if it's worth anything on the lathe and it was super easy to turn because it was soft as can be I've been inching my way forward to this goal of doing a big bowl or vase with a tree inside it, you know, kind of in the in a window and an inset. And so I've also got this goal never to buy a piece of wood, but to salvage it or use whatever I get out of my backyard. And so this is kind of me doing my best to make the most of a crappy piece of wood. <laughs> In the end, the wood actually held up nicely. Right about here, you're gonna see a big chunk of wood fly off, and I did have to glue that back on, but that was the only problem with this, with the wood itself, <clears throat> I was pleasantly surprised. For once, I used a piece of wood that was uh, dry and not so green that it cracked afterwards, which has kind of been my go-to. We've been uh, building this website, artforour.org. It's um, a place where anybody can find something they can do to help out with a fight against child sex trafficking. Um, you can buy a t-shirt, you can buy artwork, you can donate artwork. Uh, we're talking anything from jewelry, painting, woodworking. Um, We've had some textiles, some um, fabric art come in. There's even an Amazon store that if you click on the link, anything you buy when you access Amazon, no matter what it is you're buying, uh, earns Operation Smile about 5%. So go take a look. There's something you can do no matter where you live, no matter what uh, you do. Um, if you shop on Amazon, you can help. If you want to buy some art, you can help. If nothing more, you could certainly share it on social media and that would also be helpful. So my thought on this project was to create two big windows with two decent sized uh, miniature trees and I've learned from the past, at least I thought I had learned, that uh, the moisture in the twigs was the problem with creating bubbles and that. So I found these off of a dead bush. They're really dry, extremely brittle. Um, I kind of beefed them up, glued them together. This uh, instant glue that you spray an activator on is absolutely amazing. I don't know how I didn't know about it before. Somebody suggested it, and I'm glad they did because this stuff, this stuff sets up literally in like five seconds. Uh, we just got to hold it for a second, and it comes off. 
Uh, I'm sorry, it holds really strongly at that point. So I'm very happy with that. I'll show you a close up later on of the brand I've used here. So one thing I've, I've done a number of these projects where I'm creating windows, putting leaves and vines and things in them. And people have suggested, why not hollow out the window, put the item in there, do your resin and then fill, uh, cut out the middle. So this time I thought I'd give that a try. Save myself having to treat the inside of the vase or bowl twice. This is uh, what I used for sealant this time. It's called a workable fixative. Uh, you can find that on Amazon as well. I know somebody, several people have said, why don't you just get yourself a router? And I need to, <laughs> I just haven't yet. This little roto zip more or less gets it done, but um, I can see I could use a more powerful machine it would help me out, save some time for sure. Thankfully this willow wood is quite soft, so I wasn't killing myself like with other projects where it's just so dang hard. Uh, this stuff, quite easy to work with. And I'm glad the finished product held nicely. It's nice when you use resin, uh, it kind of seeps into all the cracks and stabilizes what otherwise would not have been a great piece of wood. So up until this point, I was thinking, I've got this thing figured out. I've tried a lot of projects like this and I've had different issues and I, th I thought, okay, based on people's suggestions and my experience, I've got a game plan. Um, I seal the wood here with uh, some epoxy. This part worked out great. Uh, Total Boat has been kind enough to uh, be a sponsor for my channel and which is awesome, it's helped me donate a whole lot more money to Operation Angry Railroad instead of spending it on resin. So thank you to them. Um, if you look in the description, there's a code, uh, PRIEST15. Uh, you can get um, uh, a discount over at totalboat.com if you use that code. So take a look in the description there. In the past, I hadn't sealed the wood. Got a lot of bubbles and people said, well, it must be the moisture or air escaping from the wood. Um, so I thought, okay, let's, let's be serious this time. Let's not get rushed and let's see if we can't get this thing to seal off. And I think this part worked wonderfully well. It hardened well, filled all the cracks as best as you could hope for in the circumstances. And that part I have zero complaints about. It turned out well. What I'm learning though is if you read on the box, for every every resin maker out there, they all say you gotta be careful about the depth of the resin. Here's your Insta Glue. That stuff worked out like a charm. Anyway, they all say, okay, you can only do half inch, inch, inch and a half, whatever, or you're gonna have problems. And I've gone way past that with my projects before and never had any cracking. Um, and what I didn't realize is the reason it wasn't cracking, at least this is my theory, is that I always hollow out my bowls and vases be to begin with. So even though I've got two or three inches thick walls because of these big products I'm, or you know different items I'm putting in there, it's cooled from both sides. You've got air in the inside and the outside, and I've never had a problem with cracking. Bubbles have been an issue for sure, but not the cracking so I didn't realize that if you didn't halt the middle so much more heat would be trapped in there and uh, this thing absolutely shattered when it set up <laughs> so I think I appreciate the, the uh, suggestions on that but I, I think the heat is a problem 
and unless I can find a form that fits my unusually shaped products perfectly, the walls are going to be thicker <clears throat> because I keep trying this crazy stuff, so I don't know. One thing that also went wrong with this is I carefully put two brand new garbage bags around and taped it. Something I've done before and I've had no problems, no leaks whatsoever. Um, and you saw before I used that tuck tape to carefully hold those branches in there. Um, I don't know how, but somehow this thing leaked. And so unfortunately as it leaked, the uh, tuck tape came in quite deeply. Uh, and we'll see what happens there. Here's your total boat fix set epoxy. Great stuff, great company to work with. I've had no problems with it. It sets very slowly, uh, in theory, allowing bubbles to escape um, better than if it were to set up uh, really quickly. So I've liked this so far. I think I'll keep using it for sure. If you're new to using epoxy and resin, uh, you cannot mix it enough, which is a trick, right? If you're doing a big old project like this, you spend all night mixing this stuff. But if you don't, you're going to have soft spots and won't cure correctly. This is me wiggling this thing all over the place, trying to get any trapped air out of there initially. I'm on a mission to get rid of bubbles. And um, a pressure pot, this is a five gallon pressure pot. You can see it in the description. It's useful. Here's my shelf of shame. Everyone needs a shelf of shame. These are my products, projects that have just not panned out. Um, all the lessons learned that just weren't salvageable. I love to look up there and see how far I've come, things I've learned. I think my problem is, is I love to try new things and I keep adding new variables instead of just sticking with the same product project again and again and getting better at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Not a scientific approach. I'm constantly having to rework things as I change three or four variables at a time, but whatever. That's what makes it exciting. So, so again, I had a big leak. Um, I poured it upside down, trying to keep the resin out of, off of the tenon, which was somebody else's suggestion. And Everything wrong that could have gone wrong went wrong. Not only did it leak and the tape, the tape sunk really far into those windows, but a whole bunch of resin somehow stayed on top of the tenon even though it sunk way below it and left a hole. <laughs> so, so I had to fix the tenon, fill a hole, and as you can see, I started off with this big, beautiful globe-looking thing, and I had to whittle this down by, I don't even know, 50%. And I almost threw it in the garbage right about here because I could, it was right about here I realized how deep the cracks were and how many. And you can see the tape just way in there and I thought, there's nothing going to be left of this thing. But... Even though it didn't go nearly as planned, uh, something cool did come out of it. And I, I decided to embrace the cracks because it kind of looks like a tree on top of a tree if you look at those crack marks. And I thought, you know what, why not embrace the uh, abstract art thing and in the end it's something I wouldn't have ever created myself and it was, you know, why not, why not let Mother Nature have a role in this. I decided to do something a little different when I realized how much of this I was going to lose. Um, I decided to drill um, through the, the bottom instead of the top um, and so you can put a little light up in there and either put it upside down or put the light inside it however you wanted to do it. This is me going back and filling a really deep pocket that just wasn't acceptable. I also put resin all through the cracks just to make sure that none of these chunks were going to fly out and kill me when I was uh, turning it. <clears throat> When I'm out working in the shop, 
it's usually in the evening after a long day of work and for me it's therapy it's it's a good stress reliever so I've always got music just blaring in the background which is why I rarely uh, allow any sound because when you speed it up it sounds horrible a lot of 80s rock that's where it's at been at this just over a year now and I think sanding is one thing I've finally figured out. So what I'm doing is going from um, 80 grit regular sandpaper. I use a palm sander a lot for other projects so I just and it fits nice in your hand just taking it off the sander so I'll go from 60 grit um, up to 300 and that gets you plenty good for wood projects for the resin it's not enough so I go from there to a flexible foam a wet sanding system that takes me from 500 grit up to 2000 plus and so far that has been almost perfect uh, once I treat it with teak oil I, I can't see hardly any blemishes at all unless you hold the light up to it so I've been very very happy with that Here's your wet sanding system. I really like this foam back stuff. It's really forgiving, easy to, to hold on to if you've got a wobbly piece and it gets the job done very well. This is a Forgener bit. I, I like to use these to hollow out the center to save time. Also, this thing turned out really narrow, so it's hard to turn in that narrow of a space that deep in safely. I don't have a fancy uh, hollow form kit yet. I'll get one one of these days, but for now, uh, this saves me from killing myself. There's certainly a, certainly a controversy out there about whether to use gloves with power equipment, especially rotating power equipment. Um, I'm actually a, a trauma surgeon, a foot and ankle trauma surgeon. Uh, I, a lot of hand colleagues, and from what I can tell, if you've got a skin tight glove and you're and you're careful. You're going to save yourself from the small injuries that are going to happen if you don't wear a glove. Um, but if you wear loose, big, thick gloves and you get it caught between the wood and the tool rest, you're toast. So most people say don't use gloves. And when I turn resin, at least in the early stages, some of that stuff is super painful coming off of there. So I like to wear gloves just to protect myself from little nicks and things that would be a real problem as I'm doing surgery and I need sterile hands and I scrub up. Um, so you pick your poison. When I sand, I like to usually not wear gloves. Now if you look close here, I robbed my wife's um, salad tongs. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get in there far enough with my hand. And it worked out wonderfully well. And I'm still married, so everybody went one today. I just grip the sandpaper. It has kind of a rubber coating over the claws and it worked out really well actually. I know there's some fancy sanding discs you can use, but um, for this application I thought it worked, worked out really well.
I suppose one drawback from using a wet sanding system is you got to protect your your machine from rust. So I was pull out a big tarp and cover everything up when I'm doing that section of it. So anyway, these projects been a lot of fun. Um, over at artforour.org, we could use more donor artists. So if you know somebody who does artwork, jewelry, painting, uh, music, and kind of sewing, you know, whatever it is that's, that you like to do, uh, make a donation, make a purchase. And all 100% of, of the profit that we get, we send to OUR and our website is run by volunteers, so we're not taking any of this. So here you go, crystal tree and abstract form. Back to the drawing board.